So uh, ALM is, is a rare disease. There are a, a, some patients with myeloma, about 10% of myeloma patients that will develop also ALM or have concomitant ALM but most patients with ALM are primary ALM patients. Uh, um, the AL stands for amyloid lambda or kappa, light chain amyloidosis, and the uh, product of the plasma cell, the light chains, are the, which are secreted by the plasma cells, they aggregate within organs, mostly the heart, the kidneys, and actually any organ in the body, and cause damage to this organ. So ALM amyloidosis is a disease where the malignant plasma cell secretes a certain protein that causes damage. ALM amyloidosis is diagnosed first of all by suspicion, and then we're trying to prove just like any other malignant disease, by a biopsy to find the amyloid. And we uh, are trying to diagnose this through either directly from the organs, but if it's the heart or the kidney, then the biopsy is more difficult. We try to uh, assess it by uh, checking the um, um, presence of amyloid within the uh, fat, uh, uh, with a fat pet biopsy or a soft tissue biopsy and we dye them with a special dye which is called Congo Red, which is uh, very specific and sens sensitive to find this amyloidosis when the protein is, is uh, within the, the um, uh, fat bed or, or the tissue. So both diseases are diseases of the plasma cells. Um, the plasma cell is the sick cell. In ALA amyloidosis, it proliferates slow, and in myeloma, it proliferates fast, but the cell is the same cell, and this is why even some patients with myeloma will have amyloidosis. Why these diseases are, do not behave exactly the same, we don't really know. So because it's the sick plasma cell, as we said before, the treatments are basically the same treatments. The only problem with the treatments are that treatments that are designed for myeloma are not designed for AL amyloidosis patients in terms of their toxicity. So because these patients will have cardiac toxicity, they will have congestive heart failure, when you give them treatments, they might deteriorate faster than myeloma patients, and you need to be more careful with the treatments. But the, basically, the same chemotherapies, the same novel agents are used for myeloma, they're used for amyloidosis as well. So there are um, various clinical trials running for amyloidosis, but because it's a rare disease, we're talking about a disease that occurs in about 10 per million patients, uh, there aren't too many clinical trials. Um, the clinical trials are designed today are trying to test both um, to see if the same sub substances that we use for myeloma are good enough or not toxic, too toxic for AL amyloidosis patients. There are also trials of, of medications trying to take the amyloid out of the system. Uh, up till now, unfortunately, these trials failed. So, but there are still ongoing trials with newer medications. Hopefully, they will work as well. I think patient advocacy is extremely important. Um, uh, we uh, work as physicians in very close collaborations to uh, patient advocacy groups in order to promote the uh, education of both the patients and the physicians, um, general physicians as well as hematologists, to treat better and to find and diagnose better the patients, to diagnose them earlier, to give them better treatment in the future, and of course to promote medications and to promote uh, patient-oriented uh, results of trials to, to get um, um, the treatments to aid the patients even more than they are now. I am myself an amyloidosis patient for 10 years and uh, as such faced uh, all the uh, challenges possible and experience of 10 years of having the disease and uh, also learned a lot about the disease from different articles 
and because it is an orphan disease and uh, it's uh, it's very rare and uh, the most important challenges we have in this disease are connected with uh, diagnosis of the disease uh, awareness about the disease both in the uh, public and uh, potential patients as well as in the medical uh, community and uh, the difference in treatment uh, between uh, uh, rural places in a country and central places in the country. So all this uh, all these issues that I pointed out should be tackled and taken care of by an, uh, an air amyloidosis association. Uh, in Europe, uh, the problem is that uh, there are very few air amyloidosis organizations. And uh, uh, because MP is um, a myeloma organization and myeloma is uh, very it's very similar to amyloidosis many points getting even the same treatment and uh, about 10 to 15 percent of myeloma patients get sometimes in the time span uh, amyloidosis i think that uh, the myeloma organizations are the right organization that could help to create amyloidosis organization over Europe or represent amyloidosis patients themselves.